there's one piece of tr trim on this model that the position is very important. This piece of, I guess you'd call it picture molding, I don't know. Um, instead of leaving this to your eye or measuring, we've provided a spacer. The spacer goes up against the crown molding and when this piece gets glued in, you'll push it up against the spacer. The reason this piece is important is because if it's too low, your carved piece will not fit properly. You want to get the piece, carved piece centered on your center line. And these small, I guess we'll call them leaves, these small leaves are positioned just slightly above the level of the mantle. So as you can see, this is a pretty key piece. That's about where that should go. This piece of molding, we're going to, again, leave it a little intentionally long. We're going to cut a miter in this neighborhood here. Next, we want to cut the opposite angle. This will turn into our longest piece. So you don't get crossed up, you know, righties and lefties. One side will be easier for some and harder for others. It's very hard for me to cut lefty. In a case like this, where I'm not worried about the, the accuracy, the position of the cut, I can take this piece and flip it upside down. And since I'm a righty, that's much more comfortable. I'll get a cleaner cut. Once again, we're using gravity as our friend I flipped the model upside down, and we're going to check the fit. We're going to get these guys lined up perfectly right there. So now that we have a good joint, and we can take and scribe the side piece, which will, again, turn into our anchor piece once it's glued in. Now we're going to use our spacer. We're going to stand it up against the crown molding. I'm going to drop this piece on top of it. This one's a little awkward, but once it's in, everything else should be easier. You can see that miter's open, so we're going to slide that over a little bit right there. You may find it easier to lay the model on its side, use your spacer, and, and then glue this piece in. But it has to hang off the table a little bit, so when you check the joint, your long stick is actually hanging past your work board. Okay, put our spacer in position. This piece that had the miter already cut on it, up against there. And this is going to allow us to make our knife cut. as a guide for the next miter. And since this is the long piece, make sure you put your reference mark, which direction the miter is supposed to go. Okay, we'll stall our spacer. And lay that trim right up against the spacer. I find it easier working towards me as opposed to reaching over the model and pushing away. And just even pressure across this whole piece until that jet glue grabs. It's usually about 20 seconds. And spread your fingers out. Now would be a good time to remove the spacer and look for any stray glue that needs cleanup. That one looks pretty good. Okay, we'll put that second side piece, we have a good joint, and scribe it. Okay, 
we're going to use our spacer again as a guide. Oh, we're going to remove the spacer. If we did not have a spacer, you could always make sure that that piece is square by using a square. Lay it up there like that. If you do not own a combination square, you can get creative. You can use this type of square. So imagine this board, this piece of trim is crooked. You would just line it up that way with a square. You could use an exacto square. It's thin, but it does the same thing. Or you can use another object that is a known square end, such as your miter box, and that will square up. And here's another tool that's known square that can line up your molding. You can use it like this. You can use it many different ways. You can use it like this. We've already spackled the nail heads in the top of the model, but now after we've added the molding, we can spackle that seam. And if you want the back of this model to be a nice, smooth, clean paint job, you may wish to spackle the joints where the molding meets the plywood. Again, any excess sands off easily.